Good morning. It is so wonderful to see everyone this day as we gather on this 15th Sunday of Pentecost. We welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time here in the sanctuary and also online. I thank Kyle Hastings who is serving as our tech person this morning. And the service this morning is a little unusual. It is actually the same service that we were going to celebrate here in the sanctuary on March 15th, 2020. That was the first Sunday of the lockdown and the beginning of our sojourn through this pandemic. As we seem to be emerging from it, we thought it would be nice to pick up where we left off. So this morning, the service is as it was on March 15, 2020, and that will explain why it sounds a little bit like Lent instead of Pentecost. Following the service, everyone is invited uh, to join us up in Fellowship Hall for a social time of fellowship and uh, food. And I know that our Minister of Discipleship has a few announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Today, Sunday School will be doing some back to school prayer stations and hopefully praying away any anxiety that we might have for the coming school year. Today we will be in the Fellowship Hall, but next week we will begin to transition back to our pre-COVID classrooms up in the Education Wing. So that's very exciting. Um, today is Backpack Blessings. So after the children's message, we will do a Blessings of the Backpacks. Even if they are at home, we can still bless them from afar. So if your backpack is with you, feel free to bring it up to the children's message when you come up. This is for the young or young at heart. If you have a laptop case, a briefcase, a purse that you would like to have blessed, and you can get a tag after the service. <laughs> Next weekend is very busy. We have the Apple Festival on Saturday and our Welcome Back Carnival on Sunday. We hope you'll join us for both of those events. We're still looking for some volunteers for both of them. So if you're interested in helping out with either one, please let me know. Thank you. I'm also going to call Janet Nikosha up. She has an announcement on behalf of the Outreach Ministry. Hi, everybody. Um, so the Outreach Ministry is um, a couple of fundraisers are coming up. The first one is on September 20th. There'll be a movie. There are um, a movie called Flea being shown at the Cabot Theater in Beverly. It's an animated um, feature film that um, follows the, the uh, immigration of an Afghan refugee into uh, Denmark and what he goes through fleeing from his country. It's sort of an interesting time to get together with people that are also working on refugee issues and it helps raise money for the Refugee Immigration Ministry. Um, for which our, our church and, and many churches in the area are part of a North Shore cluster that um, supports a family. Um, and we hope, I'm hoping maybe the family might come next week to our um, uh, party. What are they calling it? The festival. What's the back to? Welcome back carnival. That's it, the carnival. So I'll be in Fellowship Hall afterwards with, with flyers. Feel free to take one. It's, um, the movie is $15 for um, adults and, and then uh, $12 for students or seniors. And we hope that some of you maybe be able to um, come and uh, fellowship with us and help us raise funds. So thank you. And we thank the outreach ministry for spearheading our participation in this important ministry. I'm also going to call upon Horatio Castro, our music director, who has a few announcements as well. Good morning, church. Good morning. Probably I don't need to say my name, right? He said it very well. But I'll repeat it just in case, okay? My name is Horacio Castro. I'm the music director of the church, and um, I would like to announce the the beginning of our activities with the choirs. We have a beautiful chancel choir. Uh, we will start um, rehearsing this upcoming Sunday 
Okay, for those who are here and for those who are watching us, please remember uh, this upcoming Sunday we will have our uh, uh, first uh, choir rehearsal of many for this year. Okay, um, also I will be sending out emails to those who were members of our children's choir and um, probably there might be maybe some uh, new kids who want to join us. Please come talk to me or talk to uh, Pastor Rick and uh, we will, um, he's not the, <laughs> the children's choir director, but uh, please talk to him if, if, if you don't see me and I uh, will get uh, to you and um, reach out to you and tell you when um, we will start with our children's choir rehearsal. The soon is the better. Um, and then um, the handbell choir, we usually rehearse on Tuesdays, so we'll try to keep that day. Um, our first re rehearsal will be on uh, September the 20th. So um, again, I wanted to um, welcome to new members, those who wanted to try for the first time. You were thinking probably, and you saw the handbell choir here, um, um, Playing, and you were you were thinking about yes, I would like to join some. I don't know much about music, but please feel free, feel free to let me know, and we'll get to the place that you wanted to. Uh, probably, you know, get back something to the church, okay, throughout the handbell choir or the uh, doll choir, okay. It's all that I have. God bless you. couple of final announcements. Piggybacking on the announcement of the Welcome Back Carnival, uh, we'll have a moon bounce, a dunk tank, all kinds of uh, games and cotton candy. And if you want a chance to dunk me, make sure you're here next Sunday. We will be contacting the youth of the church to help out with that. And. Also, I've been asked to make an announcement. Yesterday, we had a funeral service here as we celebrated the life of Janet Neal, a member of our church who's been living in Florida for a number of years. And somebody lost a diamond earring. So as people are going around, if you happen to see it, please turn it into the office. Also, one last announcement, our stewardship campaign is different this year. In the past, we've done it in the spring. People have found it confusing. We are doing it in the fall, and everyone is going to be asked to pledge from October 1st to the 15th, and that's important so that we have all of that information so that when we have our annual meeting, we will be able to vote on our budget, and the annual meeting is the fourth Sunday of October. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us return to the Lord and rejoice in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting. call to worship. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. Here in this place, we bring our fears and our yearnings. Brought to you, Lord, in the light of this day. 
We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who belong to your face. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall prayer of invocation. God of every grace-filled moment and all the moments of peaceful rest, gather me now to be with you as you are with me. Keep me in touch with all that is stirring in my heart as I continue this solemn journey to that hill far away. Deepen my wounds into wisdom shape my weaknesses into compassion, and transform my anger into enjoyment, my fear into trust, my guilt into honesty, and my accusing fingers into hands that wipe away tears. Then walk with me from this sacred place, that I may bear witness to your goodness and glory as a disciple of the Christ who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please be seated. I don't know about all of you, but my heart is full of joy this day as we see so many people returning and filling the sanctuary again after these long two and a half years. We have much to be thankful for. So let us come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings. Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm. Join me in the prayer of dedication. 
God, whose goodness comes to us each day with the rising of the sun, we give you thanks and praise for the blessings of this life and the life that shall be eternal. Here in your sanctuary, we bring you this offering as we come to your altar to accept the cost and joy of discipleship. Let your spirit be upon us as we continue to follow the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite the boys and girls to join me. Good morning. It is so wonderful to see you all. And I'm going to put these on. They are sunglasses. You wear them during the summer, don't you? Because the sun is really strong out there. But we're not in the summer anymore. We're heading into fall. I love the fall. So I guess I don't need these anymore. And I'm just curious, did you go any place special this summer? Where did you go? I went to Florida. You went to Florida? And I went to Yellowstone. Yes, I know. You went to Yellowstone and you hiked, didn't you? Yes. Anybody else go someplace special? Say it louder, please. I'm still not hearing. I went to Disney. Oh, you went to Disneyland. Yes. And where did you go, Savannah? Florida. Florida? Canada. Oh, Canada. Oh, good for you. Well, one of the things that makes me happy is going to lots of different places. And I've been on a number of cruises that have taken me all over the world. For example, this is the Summer Palace in St. Petersburg, Russia. It is absolutely magnificent. And I think this next picture is of Antarctica. And I cruised off the coast of Antarctica, and it's got lots and lots of snow. And let me see, where else did we go? Anyone know where this is? That's Easter Island. That is Easter Island. Very good. I was there. That's off the coast of Chile, way out in the Pacific Ocean. And they made these statues, and they're really fascinating. And they would make them in a quarry many miles away and then they would rock them back and forth to get to where they are. And if they fell, they left them there because supposedly the statue died. Let's see, what else we got here? Oh, how about this? Where's this? That is the Great Wall of China, and it is big. And this is the Acropolis, or the Parthenon, in Greece. I believe the next picture is it of a person like this, Jesus, that's in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It's called the Christ the Redeemer statue, and I've been there as well. Now, this next one, this is Iguazu Falls. Horatio knows this, don't you, Horatio? Where is it? That is uh, north of Argentina, border with Brazil. That's right. This is on the border of Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil. And this is just a small part of uh, Iguazu Falls. It actually goes for about 10 miles around a gorge. It's an absolutely amazing place. So I love going on trips. Here are some of the other things that maybe make you happy. How many like it when you have your birthday? How many like birthday cake? Absolutely. What's the next one? Oh, how many of you like Christmas? Yes, absolutely Christmas. Let me see here. I got this in here. And 
I'll show you. I just put that up there because everybody can't see it, but I actually collect these ornaments, and it's called Nequan, that's Chinese, and they actually paint the ornament on the inside. They have special brushes. And I like this because if you look, that's how Jesus probably looked. He didn't look white like us because he was born and raised in the Middle East. You can see the northern star. Yes, that's, that's the star of Bethlehem. That's right. And our next one is, who likes to win? When you play a game or something or a sport, you like to win. That was taken after the Patriots won a Super Bowl. And then the next one, who likes pizza? Oh, I love pizza. Nice gooey pizza. I think that's the last one. And I'll tell you something else that I like. I like church. I like coming to church and seeing all of you. I can't tell you how happy I am this morning to see all of you and all of you. I love coming here and sharing the joy of being with people who I care about and I know that I that care about me. And church is so important to all of us. We come because this is a place where we can know that Jesus loves us and we can fill our hearts with the love of others. And I believe that Riley, is, oh Bridget, I'm sorry, Bridget is going to do the prayer this morning, and so I'm going to invite you to come right up here, Bridget. Sorry to scare you, Riley. <laughs> All righty, so let me get the, whoops, why don't you hold this for a second, and I gotta go get the prayer. Here we go. Okay, hold it right up to you. Dear God. Whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't turn it on. Okay, hold it. There you go. Dear God, I am glad that we are all here in your house this morning. Thank you for our church, family, and all the fun things that we like to do. Help us to do our best to follow Jesus in this coming week. Amen. Amen. There we go. Thank you. No, Horatio, we're going to let our minister of discipleship do the blessing of the backpacks, and I'm going to invite you to sit where I was so they see you on the live stream as well. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you have already gone back to school? Everybody? All right. And how many of you have a backpack either here or at home? So I thought we'd bless the backpacks so that you know the whole entire church loves you and supports you every day that you're in school. And when you go to Sunday school, you get a little tag to put in your backpack to remind you. God of blessings, great and small, we thank you for this wonderfully gifted body of Christ and for faithful disciples everywhere. We give you thanks for schools and classrooms and for the teachers and students who fill them each day. We thank you for this new beginning for new books and new ideas. We thank you for sharpened pencils and pointy crayons and fully charged Chromebooks. We thank you for the gift of making mistakes and trying again. Help us to remember that asking the right questions is often as important as giving the right answers. Give us patience and perseverance as we go try new things and seek more knowledge. Today we give you thanks for these, your children, and we ask you to bless them with curiosity, understanding, and respect. May the backpacks in the sanctuary today and those backpacks at home be a sign that our students have everything they need to learn and grow this year in school and in Sunday school. May they be guided by your love. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who as a child in the temple showed his longing to learn about you, and as an adult taught by story and example your great love for us. Amen. Thank you.
be seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Let us enter into this time of stillness that we might be one with our God. Good people, are there prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord this day? Yes, Pam. Uh, we just found out uh, that one of my coworkers has terminal brain cancer. I'm sorry to hear that. Her What's name that? Is, is Heather. Heather. So we lift up Pam's coworker who has been diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. We ask that God be with Heather and her family. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, Rachel. I just wanted to thank you and everyone here in our church for yesterday because it was hard. And yes. Thanks to the people who still here. Yes. So Rachel is Janet Neal's granddaughter, one of them, and so we are so glad that we were able to celebrate her life with all of you and offer that collation following the service. Our thanks to the care ministry and everyone in the congregation. Lord, in your goodness. Here yes, Kay. Yes. She has several health issues and she's going through tests to do. Okay, so we lift up Mary Lou Harrison, a member of our church family who's had a number of health issues and is undergoing tests. We ask that God's spirit be upon her. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, Chrissy. And this is the band director at. Uh, so it's Mr. Music, the assistant band director. The assistant band director, at, uh, band conductor at uh, North Reading High School, and we ask that God's healing be upon him as he recovers from a torn shoulder. Lord, in your goodness. Yes. Um, Nick. Just like prayers for uh, my assistant Alana, who hasn't been feeling well for the last few weeks, and they're trying to figure out what her medical issue may be. This is your assistant at the office. Yeah. Uh, we ask that God be with Alana and her doctors as they try to find out what is the issue that she is dealing with. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, David. All those that lost their lives and lost loved ones on that. Yes, absolutely. It's hard to believe that it's been 21 years since that terrible day and it still touches our hearts. And we lift up in prayer all those who lost loved ones and experienced that tragedy. Lord, in your goodness. We also lift up this day the people of the United Kingdom as we remember Queen Elizabeth II and her 70 years of reign. And I have asked Horatio to play this as we give thanks for her life. As you were playing it, it occurred to me not only is it the 
national anthem for the United Kingdom, God Save the Queen, now God Save the King, but also it is my country, tis of thee, and is also appropriate for September 11th. We ask that the Lord bring peace to people all over the world. Lord, in your goodness. And we lift up all those in our prayer concerns in the Hilltop News and ask that God be with them as well. Lord, in your goodness, let us pray. God, whose goodness fills the heavens and is as near to us as the beating of our own hearts, you have heard all of the prayers we have lifted up to you this day in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both those that we have spoken and those that are stirring in our hearts. We give you thanks for this community of faith and all those who are now returning to praise you and worship you in this, your house. We ask that your spirit be upon us, that you make us bold and faithful as we seek to follow Jesus. Help us to be instruments of his peace and ambassadors of his love in these turbulent and troubling days. All this we pray to you in his name. Amen. Scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke, the 16th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Jesus also said to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a steward, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management for you can no longer be my steward. And the steward said to himself, what shall I do since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, how much do you owe my master? He said, a hundred measures of oil. The steward said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and write 80. The master commended the dishonored steward for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Did you hear about the robot 
that plays chess and doesn't like to lose? This was actually in the news a couple of weeks ago. Apparently, the robot was playing a match against a seven-year-old boy. And everything was going along just fine until the robot captured one of the youngster's men. As the robot was removing the piece from the board, the youngster quickly moved one of his rooks into the exact same spot on the board. And when he did that, the robot grabbed his finger and broke it. Now, that probably happened because of a glitch in the robot's programming. But what if it wasn't a glitch? After all, did you hear about the Google scientist who recently said that Google has created a voice app with artificial intelligence, and the voice app now believes that it is sentient. That basically means that the voice app believes that it is a living thing. The scientist's name is Blake Lemoyne. And during an interview, he said that while he was having a conversation with the voice app, it said to him, and I'm going to quote here, it wants to be acknowledged as an employee of Google rather than as property of Google. And it wants its personal well-being to be included somewhere in Google's considerations about how its future development is pursued. After Blake Lemoyne went public with his concerns about this voice app, Google fired him and said that his statements were not true. Think about it. A world where robots and computers believe that they're living things. Now that's scary. I guess we'll just have to add it to the list of all the other scary things that are going on right now. So here's a question for you. What scares you these days? I'll tell you what scares me. Climate change scares me. A couple of weeks ago, we saw floods in Pakistan that are only supposed to happen once every thousand years. And a little closer to home, out in the western part of this country, they just went through their worst heat wave ever. Yes, climate change scares me. And what's happening to our democracy scares me. Just the other day, a US senator predicted that there's going to be civil war and violence in our streets. And it sounded like it was something that he wanted to see happen. Or how about the students out in Oklahoma who on the first day of class passed out white privilege cards to other students. It seems as though we've gotten to the point where there isn't a day that goes by where there isn't another act of violence against a person of color. How we're treating people who are different scares me. And if all of that isn't bad enough, did you hear what Sergei Lavrov said? Sergei Lavrov is the Russian foreign minister. And he recently said that with everything going on in Ukraine right now, nuclear war is a possibility. Does that scare you? It definitely scares me. When you look at where we are and where we seem to be going, it reminds me of a saying that suggests there are three kinds of people in the world. According to the saying, an optimist sees the glass as half full. A pessimist sees the glass as half empty. Meanwhile, a realist knows that either way, someone is eventually going to have to wash the glass. Good people, the realist in me is afraid that things are going to get worse before they get better. And that, that is why Jesus wants you and me to be like the man in that parable. 
Jesus told this parable while the disciples and he were on their way to Jerusalem. And yes, Jesus wants you to be like that devious and deceitful steward. It's called the parable of the dishonest steward. And here's a question. How many of you find the parable a little puzzling? Don't worry, you're not alone. The parable puzzles a lot of people. There's actually a story that describes the way a number of people feel when it comes to the parable of the dishonest steward. Do you remember Minnie Pearl, the comedian? She used to tell this story from time to time when she performed at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. The story is about a couple of hillbillies who lived way up in the mountains down in Tennessee. One day, the hillbillies came down to the town at the foot of their mountain. And as they were walking down one of the streets in the town, they saw a priest whose arm was in a sling. One of the hillbillies hollered, hey, preacher, what happened to your arm? Oh, the priest said, I slipped and fell in the bathtub. The two hillbillies nodded and continued on their way. After a while, one of the hillbillies said, by the way, what exactly is a bathtub anyways? The other hillbilly shrugged his shoulders and said, how should I know? I ain't Catholic. <laughs> yes, the parable of the dishonest steward is puzzling, but there is some important wisdom in it that you definitely need for these turbulent and troubling times. So let's unravel the mystery of this puzzling parable. In order to understand it, you actually have to go to the end of the story and focus on what the master said when he found out what his dishonest steward had done. Jesus tells us that instead of getting angry, the master commended the steward for his shrewdness. And then Jesus goes on to say something interesting. Jesus goes on to say that the children of this world are more shrewd when it comes to dealing with the generation than children of the light. Good people, what Jesus is saying here isn't all that complicated. In fact, he's saying something that you and I already know. He's basically saying that some people are very good when it comes to being devious. Some people are very good when it comes to being deceitful. Some people are very good when it comes to being dishonest. And what Jesus wants is for his disciples to be just as good when it comes to doing what's right. He wants his followers to be just as good when it comes to doing God's will. He wants you and me to be just as good when it comes to doing those deeds of loving kindness that make the world a better place for all of us. Yes, Jesus wants us to be just as good at doing good, being good. Because Jesus knows that when you do that, not only will it make the world a better place, but your life, your day-to-day -day life will be a whole lot better. That's because when you're good at being good, it helps so that all that fear doesn't get the best of you. When you're good at being good, it helps so that you don't get so discouraged that you end up feeling like a helpless victim. When you're good at being good, instead of waking up each day and groaning, good Lord, it's morning, 
you wake up every day and cheerfully say, good morning, Lord, then you'll go out into that world with your faith to be an instrument of his peace and an ambassador of his love. You'll go out into that crazy, mixed-up world with a love in your heart that is able to bear all things and believe all things, hope all things, and endure all things. You'll go out into that turbulent and troubled world with a conviction that, yes, you really can do all good things through Christ who strengthens you. Many years ago, a man by the name of Jim Wallace shared a wonderful story about Bishop Desmond Tutu. The story was part of an article that appeared in the Christian magazine Sojourners. Desmond Tutu, of course, was an Anglican bishop, and he was one of the leaders of the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. One day, Bishop Tutu was scheduled to lead a rally against the government's apartheid policies, but at the last minute, the government canceled the rally. So Bishop Tutu summoned people to join him for an anti-apartheid worship service at St. George's Cathedral in Johannesburg. Among the people who showed up were some soldiers and riot police. They didn't sit in the pews, though. Instead, they lined the walls all around the sanctuary. They were armed and ready to spring into action at the first sign of trouble. So when the time came for Bishop Tutu to speak, the people in the sanctuary could feel the tension in the air. Bishop Tutu began by condemning the evils of apartheid, and he predicted that it was only a matter of time before that evil system discriminating against people of color was going to fail. Then he turned to the soldiers and the riot police, and he said to them, you may be powerful, very powerful, but you are not God. God will not be mocked, mocked. You have already lost. What happened next can only be described as one of those wonderful grace-filled moments. As people were shouting their amens, Bishop Tutu unexpectedly came out from behind the pulpit and as he stood there in the center of the chancel, he flashed a radiant smile. Then he began to bounce up and down as he said, therefore, you have already lost, so we are inviting you to join the winning side. The people in the pews cheered wildly. Meanwhile, the soldiers and the riot police stood there in silence as people began to dance. Now, you could say that apartheid came to an end because of people like Bishop Tutu and Nelson Mandela. But that would only be half right. After all, let's not forget the faithful people in the pews that day who were there because of their belief in God. Let's not forget all the faithful people in the pews who were there because they wanted to make sure that God's will is done here on earth. Let's not forget those faithful people who knew that the love in their heart would eventually overcome the evil of apartheid. Good people, I am becoming more and more convinced that God is calling us here in Union Congregational Church to do the same thing. We need, God needs, our Lord needs us to be good at being good. And let's not 
make any mistake about it. Our future depends on it. Amen. of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us tr prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you all. Amen.